Welcome to the Call Guys podcast, co-hosted by Kevin Hopp and Ronan Passar. This podcast is all about sales development and the art and science of building high-performing outbound sales teams. Tune in weekly to hear live cold calls and also to hear Kevin and Ronan interview some of the top names in sales development. Let's dive right into this week's episode and see what we can learn. This episode is brought to you by Connect and Sell, your live conversation weapon. Teams that use Connect and Sell average five to 10 times more live conversations every day with their prospects. As a cold calling consultant, I've used every platform out there and simply put, Connect and Sell is the Cadillac of the sales acceleration space. If you haven't tried it out, your team can try it for free by clicking the link in the show notes below. Have you done things that success, successfully warmed up cold calls that actually changed your conversion rate? Yeah, dude. Actually, that's really cool that you asked me that. Um, about a year ago, I wasn't posting consistently on LinkedIn. Um, and I still really am not. Like, I'm trying to like two or three times a week, but like, I don't like slap my hand if I don't do it, which I should. Yeah. But there was a couple people I've called who were like, oh, yeah, man, like, I see your stuff on LinkedIn. What's up? And it's like, that's so cool. That's like a instant credibility thing where it's like, I, I know your name just because of like your content on LinkedIn, which is super cool. Wow. That, that really does help as long as your ICP is connected to you or follows you. Yeah, true. That's why I send out a lot of connection requests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's, it's a very underrated thing that folks, you know, some folks have this old school mindset where they're like, I only connect with people that I meet in, life, in real life or I connect with people I do business with. Blah, blah, blah. Like if you're a salesperson, you should be maxing out your connection requests every single week because I'm you're sorry. building your sphere of influence, right? These are all Say people. It. Say it. Sphere of influence, right? You're, you're building this, this, this following of folks that'll see things that you post. They're going to see your interactions. The more familiar that they are with your brand, the more likely they are to take the call. To your point, man. Dude, Amelia Taylor said it best. She always says this. Your network is your net worth. Come on. That's so good. It is. It really is. And that's where like, you know, I've seen a lot of people and, you know, unfortunately, I have a lot of friends that have gotten laid off with the tech layoffs and things going on like that. And I'm like, man, I've been laid off four times. Four times. Yeah. Every single time I went and got a job making more money than I was making before I got laid off. Every single time. And I got a raise, like a promotion, a raise. Come on. It always Come turned on. into a very positive thing, right? Dude. But it was never because I applied online. That's the other thing, right? So like I've had some people talk to me about this and they say, like, you know, well, well where should I be applying to make sure I can like always have a job lined up or I can like have job security? Like, where are the good jobs? I said, good job. You should be applying on LinkedIn. They, well, there are not good jobs out there, is what I'm trying to say. There are good relationships. There are good relationships to have. And guess what? Those relationships that you have with people and the networking you do thoughtfully and consciously when you're not looking for a job is how you get a job. Right? Yeah, so, what's yeah. the best time? What's the best time to get a job? When you have a job. When you have a job. That's right. Dude, that was great. That was awesome. That was a that was a combo. Founder. Yeah, founder of a company. And as I pulled up his LinkedIn, I was like, ding ding goes the dinner bell. He's in San Diego, right? And uh let's go to Moonshine Beach. Let's go to Moonshine Beach. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's right. Go to Moonshine Beach. So I uh I immediately like pivoted there and started saying, Oh, you're in San Diego. Cool. I play and then he asked me where I live. And then I said, Oh, I live in, you know, where I live, which is the verbs. And he's like, Oh, I live down here. And I named a golf course right by his house. And we talked about golf for three minutes, you know? Yeah, so dude. really great example of so building. building. Yeah, that went from a a cold ice bath, like ice cold cold call to like Tushar and I have this thing in common. We're in a local geography. We know what golf courses we like to play. Like incredible all up. Now, not a good lead for us. Like I kind of disqualified him on the phone um, based on where his company is because you need to have uh, you need to have budget 
in order to uh, work with us. <laughs> and he said they, they really have none. Um, but really good connection. Always good to chop it up with people in San Diego. She hit me with the, I'm actually on a meeting right now. What's your favorite over, ejection overcomer of that? Or I'm in a meeting? Yeah. I've tried oh. a couple times and said like, oh, nice. What's it about? <laughs> I've got so, one. Here's what I say, right? And there's a little bit of magic in how you say this because it makes it very clear that if this is a brush off, you're going to have to brush me off again, which is kind of annoying, right? So what you say is, they're like, oh, I'm actually in a meeting right now. You say, oh, fantastic. I will give you a call back tomorrow. And you don't say like what, like what every, every rep out there says is they say, oh, I'm sorry to catch you in a meeting. What's a better time to talk to you? What's a better time to call? What's a better time to call? Everyone always says that, right? The, the I said that. Freaking idiot. Well, idiot. The, the correct answer to what's a better time to call is never because you're a cold caller and I don't know who you are or why you're calling, right? Yep. So we know that. So, so like my whole process is like, think ahead of that. You know, that's what they're going to say. You know that they're going to be like, ah, I don't know, I'm free, you know, tomorrow, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But they, there's no value in that. So when I say, no worries, I will give you a call tomorrow, that's telling them that I'm not going away. That Like, they can brush me off now, but they're going to have to brush me off again tomorrow. Probably one third of the time, one third of the time, they will stop and say, well, what is this about? And then another little magic piece that all y'all out there can take, challenge them. The challenge is, hey, if you're busy right now and you're in a meeting, this is too important for us to talk about right now. Should we find another time? What are your thoughts? Because they just said they were busy. Now they're not busy. And then they'll, most of the time right there, they'll, they'll say, oh, no, 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 I got a minute. I got a minute. Yeah, what's this about? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Because now you've piqued their interest. You've shown that you're going to be diligent. Yeah. You're going to follow up. They're, they're saying, I want to deal with this now. I don't want to push this off. Or guess what? Totally acceptable if they say, yeah, like, call me the other day. I'm busy. Well, they hang up the phone. They're back on to the meeting. And then guess what you have to do? Call them back. Follow up. You got to follow up. Hit you got to follow up. Hit him with it. You got to follow up. Nobody's safe. Kevin Hop, no one is safe. Dang. So it ended up being about being busy. Like, at the very end. Yeah, she was on her way, way to that meeting. Yeah, it's but, uh, top of the hour. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but I'm actually really encouraged to hear her say that they outsource. And the reason why is because typically outsourcing is extremely expensive, like not using technology, like having like speakers come in and maybe even doing a book club, which isn't intentional. Like a speaker coming in is super expensive and people get speaker highs or they get conference highs and then they never apply anything that they learned to the conference or from the speaker. Right. Yeah. But the beauty of Wattspark is it's consistent and it's ongoing, right? Like it's a marathon, not a sprint. That makes sense. That makes total sense. I love it, man. Well, we've reached the end of our time together today. I want to just say Dude. thank you for, for coming on here, Gavin. How can people connect with you, learn from you? LinkedIn, the best place? Yeah, LinkedIn is the best place. My phone number is also 417-840-3737. So if anyone ever wants to cold call me, or just like chat it up. I'm your guy. The best thing that a good, a good leader can be is available. So feel free to call me whenever you want. Love that, man. Love that. Gavin, thanks for having you on. Uh, last quick shout out here to our sponsor, Connect and Sell. Guys, stay tuned. We're going to have another live calling show next week. And then we're going to get on to a kid today every other week. It's going to be a little weird to start. But next week, we're going to have a live show sponsored by Connect and Sell. It's going to be really fun. Then we're going to be on to every other week. Thank you everybody for tuning in and we will see you.